This is based on a talk given by Lungpa Buntam. We have to know about both heedfulness and heedlessness, or we might say care and carelessness. Where are care and carelessness? In what kind of practice is there proper heedfulness, and what kind of mindfulness is the right one? These are important questions to consider. Do we know which is the right practice and which is the wrong one? And if so, then how do we know? The thing is that we must have some rules, a reference point to make sure it's correct, and then if the practice doesn't meet the standard, it will never be correct and there will be no developing the path. And just to say, in saying rules here, it must not be understood as sort of any arbitrary system of rules that somebody gives us and we follow. It's only with wisdom that it's possible to have a reference point for what the rules should be. It implies the ability to see where right ends and where wrong begins. So where is heedfulness and where is heedlessness? The Buddha has said that the one who is heedful is the one who guards his six senses and is capable of seeing the profound truth of Dhamma at any moment. That is, whenever he sees a sight with his eyes, hears a sound with his ears, smells an odor with the nose, tastes a flavor with the tongue, or senses a sensation on the body, or knows a thought with the mind. So, for example, we have to be mindful and aware whenever we see an object. And what kind of awareness? So if there's no awareness, then what happens? Then the mind will be pleased whenever it meets any agreeable object through any of the senses. Then that kind of agreeable feeling does not consist of any true happiness. Because of craving to get to the agreeable object, or craving to keep it, there's no true happiness. There's no joy, no peace. And this is called suffering. It's when the mind is entirely distracted and entirely without concentration. And this is called, this is what is called heedlessness in the Buddhist teaching. So, we can see the awareness we're talking of here is not just any awareness. It is awareness based on virtue, morality, that has been developed within the mind, applied to every thought, every word, every action. And it's the awareness that is capable of seeing the suffering in pleasant things. Only by being aware in this way, rooted in the base of virtue, can the mind become concentrated at that moment, rather than distracted, confused, dull, or agitated. And with a concentrated mind, then yatha bhuta dasana, seeing reality as it actually exists, will arise. For example, seeing wrong as wrong and right as right. Seeing the cause of suffering as the cause of suffering. The cause of the end of suffering seen as the cause of the end of suffering. See things as they actually are. We will see the arising of the Dhamma within us at that moment. But how so? How do we, how do we develop this? First I will ask you questions. When we see something... What are we thinking? In what way do we see it? What does our mind think of it? How do we look for reality at the moment of seeing? How to correct it and how to solve it when we have an agreeable feeling? Whenever we meet with an agreeable object, for example, suppose we get a huge amount of money, how is our mind right at that moment? Look at the real experience and learn from it. What kind of mind arises in regard to that object? What do we think about that pleasant object? What do we do? And how do we think if we are not careless? We have to look not only at this specific case, but at the general attitudes of our mind which give rise to the different reactions based on different objects. The object is not the important thing, but how is our mind in regard to it? So whether we see tasty-looking food hear words of praise, lie down on a soft mattress, receive a delightful gift. Whatever the contact with whatever agreeable object, as we're talking of in this case, what are we going to do? How can we use careful attention to let go of carelessness at that moment? We should realize that the first condition is how we think, our attitude, our view. What comes second is the tasty looking food or any pleasant object. And the third is when we crave for the pleasant object. So how do we deal with these things? 
where is carelessness? And where do we find carefulness? Where do we find heedfulness? I am asking questions instead of only giving answers because I want you to think and to see. We have to search for the reality of the experience. Only knowing the words does not work. So try to find the answer in yourselves. Learn to solve the problems of our lives. Since our lives have been entangled with wrongdoing and unwholesomeness since our childhood until now, and we don't even realize to what extent that we have been entangled with unwholesomeness. It's time enough now to disentangle ourselves and bring heedfulness to perfection. Going back to when there is contact with an agreeable object. Supposedly there is contact with an agreeable object, and then our mind is happy, right? Happy with that object. But when we really observe it, how it really is, is it really a happiness? Or is it false happiness? It's said that we have to observe it thoroughly and carefully until the happiness is revealed as suffering. When there's contact with an agreeable object, the mind bends towards that object, it's hooked by it. When we manage the great task of becoming aware, we will be able to observe our own mind right at that moment. And how is it? Is it pleasant? Is it happiness? We agree that getting hold of the object in the mind is being changed into a feeling of happiness, right? Yes, it is said to be suffering. And when we go for this again and again, we do so because we think it's happiness. Yet the Buddha said it was suffering. Equally, when we try to get away from unpleasant objects again and again, it's because we think we're escaping from suffering. But the Buddha said that we're not. We're just running around and entangling ourselves in more and more suffering. So what's the reason for this contradiction? Who is more trustworthy, our mind or the Buddha? If we decide that the Buddha is more trustworthy, then it means that we have to investigate and watch our mind like a criminal, not to be trusted. So what is this so-called happiness with the touch of a pleasant object? We have to realize that our mind is like the ocean. When there is no wind, it is calm without waves. When our mind is stable, steady and secure, only then does it deserve the name of happiness. But in the case of the touch of an agreeable object, our mind is as if it were being blown by the wind and the wave heaves upon it. The more attractive the object, the bigger the wave. This is what is truly called suffering, when there can be no calm, no peace, when the mind is like a stormy ocean pulled by the craving for the agreeable object, the craving to get it, craving to keep it, craving to have more of it. What's actually good about this? If we remain blinded by careless attention, looking only at the outside object and its pleasantness, then how can we see the suffering of this stormy mind? And how can we let go of it? If we're seeing it rightly, we should see it like an arrow piercing our heart. Not that we think mechanically this is an arrow, or that we try to fabricate the idea that it's suffering, but really that we practice to truly see it in that way. Continue observing until seeing correctly that it is an arrow in order to drop it. And now we cannot see it. Why? This Dhamma, this truth has always been there. It's only that we lack heedfulness and self-composure. We cannot be calm within ourselves because we do not have the necessary discipline based upon which calm would develop. Most of us are very careless, unknowingly careless. Even when we feel neither happiness nor pain, and we're indifferent to something, this is simply the territory of delusion of moha. It's when we're in total ignorance, not even taking note of the object, the contact, or indifference. In regard to this, we have to wake up and realize that it is ignorance. That is how to let go of ignorance, with knowledge. And so our task is to develop heedfulness regarding the six senses and their objects, and stop allowing them to drive us. 
we must learn to be mature in our dealings with these. Only when we are no longer heedless, then wisdom arises at the moment of contact with an object of awareness. <laughs>